Hi and welcome back to another video. I've uh, met up with Tony here um, and the reason that and we give a bit of a talk on a few of these little short videos about China and, and other areas of the world is that we've both lived in China for a significant amount of time. So we have a lot of experience of China and, and I think we're able to sort of um, sort of communicate that to, to you, the viewer, from our own experiences. Now, this video I want to talk about the economy. Um, now, a lot of um, Western countries are always suggesting the Chinese economy is about to collapse. And it's been said, you know, there's, there's a famous guy on Twitter by the name of Gordon Chang. He predicts almost every year that the Chinese economy is going to collapse. But I think what a lot of Westerners forget is just how big the Chinese economy is and how many people there are. And when we had like, we had that um, issue with the uh, one big property company um, quite recently, Evergrande, <laughs> and you've got the West that say, oh, it's going to take down the Chinese economy and all this and all that. Well, in the scheme of the size of the Chinese economy, Evergrande are not like a too big to fail kind of company. You know, the government got involved, they had to do a bit of restructuring, they forced the directors and owners to sell some of their mansions and yachts and private jets and stuff. And the situation was brought under control because that's how it's done in, you know, in China. They, they make the people responsible sort of take some of the, let's say, well, for want of a better word, punishment. I'm being, um, a, I'm being a little bit sarcastic when I say this. Mm -hmm. I, I think some of Evergrande's shareholders have moved to this part of the world because I've, I've met some experts. Okay. <laughs> they say they're experts on this subject and they're going to, and, and the whole of China will, will collapse because of um, their knowledge on Evergrande. Yeah, it's, it's, mean, really, it, it's quite funny really. I mean, mm. you know, I, I think the, the Chinese government, very different to, to Western governments, whereas you, you look at the West and a lot of large corporations are really controlling what's going on there. Mm -hmm. That strikes me as it's not the case in China. The government's firmly in control of policy in China. And if they have things that start to go wrong, they address them. Um, Absolutely, and, yeah. And people are punished. Unlike the West where we had the banking crisis. I mean, you can't forget in, in the 2008 mm. um, banking crisis, which was pretty much caused by the USA, mm. um, where it, it, it put the world into recession. It was China that pretty much rescued the rest of the world from that by, by pumping their economy to get the world economy, then also buying up huge amounts of, of American government bonds, you know, to, they, they pretty much rescued America. And people forget I, that. Well, I, I, I don't know the history on this, and I know some of you will, and, and if you do some research, I think they actually started uh, the banking collapse um, in 2008 from Iceland, didn't it? Well, I think Iceland was part of it, but I, I think it, 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 the root of it was the subprime mortgages in, in America, actually. Okay. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah okay. I, I, yeah, mm -hmm. I appreciate that, yes. Oh, the, the AAA properties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Which were not AAA. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> they were mm. more like triple yeah. E. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, mm. you know, and, and I think, I think the, the Chinese economy is personally, I, I, I don't know in depth, but it strikes me as it's far more resilient than a lot of Westerners think. And the other sort of point I want to bring up is, if I look at the growth of the Chinese economy in the last 25 to 30 years, it's been outstanding. You know, no other economy grows has been anything like what China's has. And, you know, that's down one to the hard work of the Chinese people. And mm -hmm. I think, you know, they have, they are incredibly hard workers. That may be changing a bit now with some of the younger generation, but I, mm -hmm. I feel in the past the Chinese have been very, very hard workers. Mm. But also, it has to be down to government policy. You know, the government create that environment for, for that economy to grow. They've invested in infrastructures, they've invested in, you know, they've allowed um, banks to be able to finance industry cheaply. What I feel about the West is Gone are the days where Western banks back real businesses. Mm -hmm. They're more interested in making money on paper. Mm -hmm. You know, oh, we'll buy this stock and we'll sell it this and we've made all this money. But it's all false money, really, because it's only money that exists in a computer. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you look at China, 
That's a real economy. They manufacture stuff. They sell it all over the world. They bring in hard currency. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what Britain used to be like, you know, 50 years ago. We were a manufacturing powerhouse in the world at one time. Mm -hmm. But we've lost all that because banks stopped investing in industry and companies and they wanted to invest in stock markets and, and all these like, I don't know, what do you call them, paper assets. Well, there's a, there's a few things uh, that you've said that have uh, uh, brought some history back to mind okay. slightly. Uh, first of all, um, when you mentioned about Evergrande, it, when people um, at high levels make big mistakes, uh, Lee did say they are punished. And some, I'm sure some viewers will pick up and say, oh, punish, yeah, that's what you know, the CCP will yeah, do yeah, that, yeah, yeah, punish, punish, oh, whatever. Um, but yet the, the amount of times the British government um, or uh, let's say Democrats or Republicans in America, whatever, I don't know much about other governments, but when they make a mistake, they're not punished. Yeah, and people say, well, why don't you do something yeah, about they it? They should be promoted. fine. Yeah. <laughs> and get a higher position in government, you know? It's almost like they're trying to be do-gooders and say, oh, do, do something about them. You, you should punish mm -hmm. them. Well, China does punish them. And as a result, they, they punish them for a reason. One, because they've screwed normal the Normal, regular people. Over normal, there. regular people. And they've probably had some tax fraud going on as mm -hmm. well, you know, um, that, or they've borrowed too much and didn't declare it, etc. And the second thing I want to mention that you, you raised was uh, about the banking system. There, it, now, in the early 2000s, uh, so let's say 2000 to 2007, mm -hmm. um, the banks were doing everything they could to the normal person to take out, borrow money that you couldn't afford. Forward, yeah. Um, yeah. Encouraging you to take out insurances through the banks. I would go into yeah. the bank and they um, would say, oh, they would put me in a room and start talking to someone about a policy that I don't want to buy. Mm -hmm. I just want you to look after my money. I would drive and keep it in a shoebox. But they forced a lot of people to buy stuff they didn't want because Absolutely. it's all about making money. Yeah. yeah. So the, the, the banking system had, had changed. Um, to <laughs> it was almost like to screw the man on the street. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah, yeah. You know, and why were they not just lending money to... I, I don't really understand economics that well, but they went through a bad period yeah, and it really I, helped I think, with the slump. I think part of the problem was, yes. you know, like banks at one time were there were to finance industry and those industries manufactured stuff which they sold abroad and brought in currency to the country. Mm. And the West moved away from that. Yes. They moved to financing paper basically. It was all speculation, stock markets, you know, all these complicated <laughs> financial instruments that they didn't really understand. And then when it all went pear-shaped you know it wasn't the people who were doing that they still got their millions of pounds bonuses it was the ordinary man in the street that suffered mm. you know and that and that's that really irks me and now our, our, our new prime minister is going away from paper if given his chance yeah well uh, everything would be yeah. uh, computerized and yeah. uh, wow and then they really and, and if you break the law then they can do what they did in canada Block yeah. your bank account and yeah. say, right, okay, yeah. that's it. So, yeah, it's, it's oh, this. I don't know. I don't the, know. Other, the other thing I'd really like to to sort of draw a, a comparison mm. here is if mm. if you go back to the 1980s, you have India and you have China. Now these are countries with very similar population sizes. Okay. Now, yes, they are. Yeah. Um, mm. One, India has a so-called democracy, a democratic government. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, in the eyes of the West, it's, it's great because they're a democracy. In the eyes of the West, <laughs> so China cool. has a dictatorship, an authoritarian regime. Yes. But now if we fast forward to 2022, let's compare the size of the Indian economy yeah. with the size of the Chinese economy. It's magnitudes bigger, magnitudes bigger. Mm -hmm. You know, um, China has a, a massive industrial manufacturing base supplies pretty much the whole of the world with products you know yeah no other countries manage that they have top class infrastructure for logistics mm -hmm. you know no country in the world can, can get even close that maybe, maybe singapore have got have got mm. pretty good logistics but i certainly don't think that maybe south korea are, are pretty close mm. but i don't think anybody comes close to, to china now on the other hand, you have the, the, the Western government saying, oh, Chinese government are bad. You know, this, this is wrong. It's, it's not good. Mm. But they seem to have done a good job with the economy. Well, you know, yeah, yeah. I, I hear, you know, you have China, like, 
you know, they, they might have growth in one year of 5%. Oh my God, it's all doom and gloom in the Western mm. press. Oh my God, China are collapsing, blah, blah, blah. Most of those Western economies have cut off their right arm to have growth of 5%. Mm -hmm. You look at some of the European economies, they've been stagnant for years. You know, if, if they've got 1% growth, they'll be lucky. Now, it's only Germany mm. because they created Europe. Germany's mm. the powerhouse. And now they've been screwed over by the USA. Mm -hmm. You know, German economy is going to be in a terrible state. You look at, you look at Europe now, inflation's running up above 10 percent in most european economies what yeah. is it in china two percent mm. uh, yeah so you know which is the most competent government here mm. you know is it is it these western democracies or is it china's authoritarian dictatorship i, th I think the history of this uh, excuse my comparison and i've just really i'm ad-libbing as i'm mm -hmm. uh, because of what lee just said there but uh, if you go back in history let's say uh, using a comparison as as prisoners in it in, it, in, in any country, let's say, uh -huh. but I'm going to use England at the moment, prisoners in England, let's say back in the 60s, the you know, conditions were really harsh, you know, they had a bucket as a toilet, or whatever, and, mm -hmm. and they was given mail bags to stitch and, you know, and now they give prisoners uh, rooms and computers and some, you know, in America, some even get degrees during their prison service. Mm -hmm. And historically, we don't have to go back too far where, you know, 20 years at, at the most, People were saying, "Oh, give the business and the factories to to China because they've got, you know, they're a developing country." Yeah, and they did. They, they took away the mailbags. Uh, maybe they still make the mailbags, but but they have the mm -hmm. computer system. They now they have the infrastructure, and they've overtaken the Westerners that gave them the yeah. shitty jobs. Absolutely, because and their economy China, is much better. China learned very quickly. Yes. Yeah, they realised that at the start. Yeah, we we can make money by manufacturing stuff cheaply for the West. So, so let me just finish. So, so the, the point of what I'm making, some people will go to prison and come out with degrees and be judges and uh, you know, lawyers, etc. Mm -hmm. But they went in with nothing. And now China, that's my comparison. Now China is, is, um, is exceeded what the world believed mm -hmm. it would ever do. It's overtaken. Oh yeah, well, but, 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 but that's again why, why yeah. the West uh, rubbish in China so much now. Because yes. the West never Jealous expected China to overtake You're not meant them. to do that. Yeah, yeah. They, they were okay when they were making all the yeah. cheap stuff so we can have mm. low inflation. Mm. But as soon as China went up the value chain, oh my God, yeah. the West of it, the panic button, and yeah. it's all, you know, mm. chaos is let loose now. Yeah. I, I think, you know, it, it, it just makes me laugh when, when you know, you, you have these Western countries telling their people that, oh, the Chinese government's bad and we've got to stop their rise because it's going to affect our way of life. It won't matter a jot to the way of life of people in the UK no. mm -hmm. or what China does. What it stems down to is, I firmly believe, is jealousy. And, and I think there's an element where Western governments dare not let their population at large see how good China, how well China have done, because then those people might start asking questions of their own governments. Okay, and again, I'm going to use comparisons just to help me describe things a little easier. Is um, if you're, let's say, for instance, a sports personality, whether you're a football player, rugby player, cricket, mm -hmm. or an athlete, um, and someone else is better than you, no matter how much you say, oh, yeah, but they've got these trainers and they do this and they do, the only way you can beat them is to compete with them yeah. and train harder. Yeah, yeah. Now, the, yeah. Now, now, the Western mentality, the Western mentality, in, in particular the USA, is not to compete, it's just to, um, what's another word for slag them, trouble, slag them yeah. down, you know, just, just try yeah. to, you know, bad mouth the opponent. Well, it's Inst almost like, like you say with the athletes, instead of America train harder, they want to nobble the, the guy on the track, so they might stick their leg out to trip him oh, off. Oh, okay. That's basically what America trying to, rather than think, yeah, we've got to train harder and we've got to compete harder. Yeah. They just want to, disadvantage the competition yeah. by imposing sanctions and, and stuff like that. And yeah. that's America's playbook. They do it all around the world, you know. So. Yeah. Um, so, what's the solution? Well, I don't know whether there is a solution. I, th I think China will get their head down and, yeah, the sanctions are causing them a problem, but they'll get their head down and they'll be stronger. And I think, personally, I think America doing what they're doing in the West of, scoring a massive own goal because in 10 years from now mm. they will be left high and dry that's that's my prediction 
if you ever want to find out something really interesting about uh, China, its history, or the economic side of China, then watch a, a gentleman by the name of Eric Lee. Yeah, Eric uh, Lee is a very fantastic smart guy. Yeah, and, and, a... and not only is he communicates well to the Chinese people, but he actually communicates well to the Westerners to say, ah, right, now I understand. Mm -hmm. He's a, a superb communicator, knows the subject very well. And um, yeah, you've got to admire yeah, I, that guy. I, I, I think to, to conclude, I'd say that it, it, it just makes me laugh when, when um, West rubbish the Chinese government. You know, you've only just got to look at the track record mm -hmm. of the Chinese economy and that tells the story. You know, these Western politicians, they can speak all they want. We're going to do this, we're going to do this, we're going to mm. do this. 90% of the stuff they never deliver. And mm. that's a big difference in China. Chinese government delivers. Mm. Uh, and, and the results speak for themselves. Mm. You know, and I think that's pretty much the bottom line for me. Uh, and well, in conclusion, I would say stop being jealous of what the Chinese are doing and compete with them like real people. Yeah, uh, fairly. Fairly. Yeah. Um, yeah, don't try to bring them down. Make yourself better. Mm -hmm. Right, I, I think the, the, the sanctions will just make China stronger, to be fair. I think it will make them stronger. Uh, yeah. It, it's, yeah. Yeah. Um, it's going to open their eyes um, mm -hmm. to how nasty <laughs> yeah, the West can, the West be, can yeah. be, um, but there isn't really much that the outside uh, that China needs that the outside world has. Um, I'm, I'm sure there's some things. Oh, you know, there's this and that, but that, that they can cope. That, that they're, they're very resilient. They are very, resilient. very, very resilient. Anyway, let me know what you think down in the comments. It's another one of our chats. We got another three or four coming, so tune in. As I say, we've both lived in China for a long time, so we have a bit more of an insight than most people. But anyway, if you did like the video, give it a thumbs up. I will leave the links in the video for Tony's channel if you want to go and check that out. It's a new channel he's trying to get established, so please go and have a look there. Um, but as always, for now, take care. Goodbye.